Hey, what's up guys? It's Bryce here from Righteous Reptiles. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my small reptile room and all my reptiles I have in it. So I thought it's important to let you guys know this is a reptile room I also built all by myself with these two hands over here and it has lasted me for just about two years now and now it's time to upgrade to the new big reptile room but before that we've got to give a tour of this reptile room because it's important for me to go back and see how much I've grown and see how things have changed in my life so this is far from a perfect reptile room that's why I'm working on the new one and the snakes do not have nearly big enough enclosures in my opinion so anyway Let's get on with the tour. So as I come on in the door, you'll see I have made this over here, which is my DIY thing to close the door right over there. And this is just a quick little glimpse of what the reptile room actually looks like. So let's start off with Lady over here. Oh, let's see. Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Silly Bryce forgot to click record and filmed this whole sequence yesterday when the rest of the video is filmed. But missed out this part! Okay, so here's Lady. This is her enclosure. She's my biggest female ball python. Let me get her out for you so you can see her. She actually has a pretty interesting story. So recently she laid a bunch of eggs while I was away on holiday for a week. I didn't expect her to lay eggs so the eggs pretty much died and shriveled up because there wasn't enough humidity in the enclosure while I was away but that's okay because I wasn't really expecting eggs from her because I didn't breed her for a few years so she retained that sperm for a number of years and then decided one day hey let me pop out some eggs and that's what she did so this is Lady so she's a little bit smaller than she usually is but she's still a very big ball python that is. Um, she's a rescue that I was given because she wasn't eating, she wasn't able to, you know, be cared for properly and she had escaped her previous owners in closure and they couldn't find her for a few months and then they found her and I ended up getting her. So as you can see she's also had a pretty interesting life. Got a whole bunch of scale rot scars and all that. She wants to go back in her home. Let me get her hide down so she can get there. So she's in a pretty nice enclosure. The nicest one of all the ball pythons. Um, but little does she know that she's actually going to get a much nicer, bigger enclosure in the new reptile room when it's complete. I'm super excited for that and cannot wait because she's absolutely loving this enclosure, exploring and yeah, just enjoying it and yeah, I need to decorate it a bit more in the new reptile room. But that's Lady, she's an awesome girl. If you want to find out more about her, I did a full video on her up here. And moving on, we have my semi-bioactive, more so naturalistic looking leopard gecko setup and my little leopard gecko over there. She's an absolute champion and loves to eat. She does sometimes need to go on a diet when she gets fed a bit much because you know it's exciting to feed them um, but she's perfectly fine now and she doesn't need that diet anymore. So as a leopard gecko that I won she actually doesn't have a name and I've had her for almost two years. She's doing really well. She loves this enclosure so much. It's got quite a bit of size. She climbs the background. None of the plants really survive that well, except for that one in the top corner there that has survived for the past two years. All the rest have kind of died away because the lighting in her enclosure isn't the right amount of Kelvin. It's not a 6,500 Kelvin light, so it's not good enough for the plants to grow. So there she is right of it whoa did you see that she's never done that before she's really wanting some food naughty girl that's my fingers she usually gets fed by the tongs so she might get excited if she sees those yep pretty excited when she sees those but it's not feeding time as you can see she absolutely loves eating and here's another mealworm for her she absolutely loves it and is kind of going crazy and eating the tongs instead of the meal hey let go girl that's not the there's the 
Here we go. That's the meal one. So over here we have a water ball and a cold hide for the gecko. And then her hot hide is way in the corner over there where she goes to digest her meals when she's had a nice chow. She's actually hanging out there now because she's just eaten. She loves climbing the background here. Leopard geckos, funny enough, they love to climb. And that's the one succulent that has managed to stay alive, probably because it's so close to this light and that's probably why it's surviving. Otherwise that's her setup and I'm really proud of it and it looks super awesome. So if I come up from the leopard gecko, I have five of the baby bull pythons I hatched out early this year. They all are in a simple setup with paper towel as a substrate and then a hide and a water bowl. All of the babies have started eating on their own except for this one over here. This one in fact hasn't but we'll see tonight because it's feeding night and see if hopefully it'll take a meal on its own. I've got these egg crates on top of the box because it lets less light in and I've found that's helped them out eating because less movement, less stress, less light and they're doing better that way. So I'll take out some of the babies now and show you how they're doing because they're super cute. You don't need to see their setups because it's boring and I don't like their setup but that's what's got them to eat rather than having a big space where they get stressed out in especially as babies keeping them in a small spot keeps them less stressed and they're more inclined to eat which they are finally doing except for you naughty little snake okay so over here we have one of the best feeders out of the whole clutch this is probably a female, I would guess. I still need to sex them, but yeah, she's a yellow belly, I think. I have to confirm with some breeders that are more clued up on the morphs than I am because, you know, I've been out of the morph game for quite a while now. And, but I would say that this is a yellow belly just because of the light coloration, cool amount of flames, and just looking overall cleaner pattern wise. So this snake and all the ones that are eating by the time the Reptile Expo comes along will be up for sale at the SOS Reptile Expo here in South Africa. It's really kind of sad that they have to go to new homes but it's going to be exciting to see them going off to new people and new people who are excited about getting these cute little snakes. I'd love to keep them but I can't keep every snake I breed. That's just not going to be, you know, good. So over here we have another one of the good feeders and then the little picky baby who has not eaten a meal on its own yet. This one's actually in shed and you can see size wise she is or it is a lot smaller than its sibling right over here that has had a few meals on its own. This little snakey definitely needs to eat. I'm probably going to try feed it straight after it sheds now. And if not, I'll have to assist feed it again. It is thankfully taking food when I assist feed it and I'm not having to force feed it anymore. So look at that. Such a cute, beautiful little ball python. She is also going to be up for sale. And I say she because I've actually sexed her and she is a she. Hey little girl. They're growing so quickly. So here's another one of the babies. This one's pretty grumpy. Look, it's going to probably bite my hand. Don't, okay, there we go. All fine now. And then here's the last two babies. Aren't they just adorable? This one's got quite a bit of attitude, as you can see. Needs to chill a bit more. Okay, that's it for the babies. Now let's get on to some of the bigger snakes. So over here's my little tool shelf where I have all my equipment for keeping snakes. So a few snake hooks, some scissors, some tweezers, a few things that I need to have and then my little board where I write down all my feedings and stuff like that so I record all the data and then once I've fed I just tick it off and then at the end of the week I'll mark it in a book so I'm keeping record of everything. I do tend to forget about the sheds and stuff like that. It's mostly about feedings and when they fed and when they haven't. Then in here we have an enclosure with no glass and that currently 
it's just got a few miscellaneous reptile stuff in this box and pillowcase because you know you've got a bag snake sometimes when you're cleaning their enclosure and then a few supplies and decorations and stuff like that. I definitely need to get some glass and then I'll put a snake in here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make this whole room over here into somewhat of a quarantine room once the other reptile room is complete. So now I'm gonna open Mrs. Thumper's cage. She's probably gonna come out pretty quickly because she's always hungry. Or not, there she is. So this is the little rack setup I have for Mrs. Thumper, my bumblebee ball python, and she is enjoying it. But I cannot wait to give her a much bigger enclosure in the new reptile room because I really don't feel that these are sufficient enough for the long term of the animal's health. So I cannot wait to see how she reacts to her new enclosure. That's her, she's a beautiful female bumblebee ball python, Mrs. Thumper. Now we're going to have a look at Stripe, who, as I said with the other one, likes to come out because she likes food. Okay, so this is what snake hooks are for, especially when you're keeping pythons. I don't want to get bitten, so I'll just open the enclosure with the snake hook and then kind of tap her and let her know, hey, it's not food time, so you don't have to bite me um, and then I can pick her up and she'll be all friendly and kind and nice and awesome. So this is a Mojave ball python. She also has a simple setup and it's way too small for her. It goes in further backwards but I cannot wait to upgrade her to her big enclosure which she'll probably be ecstatic about. What's pretty interesting is I thought that she was a he for many years. I mean, I actually produced her. She was from the first clutch I ever had in 2013 and she's nice and big. She's going to breed herself this year. And yeah, I thought she was a boy because when I first took her to someone to get sexed so many years ago, uh, they told me that she was a he, but turns out she is not. I had some suspicions, so I checked myself now that I've gained more experience and know how to do it. And up over here is a boring enclosure, the boringest of them all, which houses Splashus, the normal female, who's actually the mother to Stripe, who you just saw now. So they are both females and She's also the mother of all the babies that you just saw previously. But now let's get on to my last ball python over here. The daddy of the babies you just saw. Not, not the daddy of her, but the daddy of all those tiny little snakes that you just saw. This is yellow belly, my yellow belly male ball python. He's a funny guy because he tends to go feed all the time because who knows why so he'll probably eat once every two weeks because he skips a week then takes a week he's just weird that way and he's always done it but he's never gone off feed for months at a time he just kind of skips every now and then last but definitely not least is my corn snake male named chimanga Chimanga basically means corn in one of the African languages, so I thought it was fitting to name him that. A very inquisitive snake, and I can't wait to get him a mate, because I think cute little baby corn snakes slithering around is not going to be the worst thing ever. So hopefully at the next Reptile Expo, we will see if I get another corn snake. I know they're popular snakes and there are tons of them, but I would like to get this guy a girl. So a bit of backstory about this guy is I was given him because someone was unable to keep him and they were moving out of the country. So I took him on and yeah, that's how I got him. He's a normal corn snake and he's just awesome. Otherwise, for the rest of the reptile room, I have my two bins over here which contain all of my breeder cockroaches that I feed to my gecko. Obviously, there's way too many of them in there for one gecko, so 
I don't know what I'd do with the rest. I've given a ton away to friends because there's so many of them in there. Then I have my Venom Defender gloves, which are a lifesaver when feeding snakes. They're just so cool to not be bitten while feeding, especially with like your pythons that sense your hand as a better heat source than the rodent and then, you know, get your hand instead. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I cannot wait to show you my new reptile room. It's going to be so exciting. I'll be moving these animals out into the reptile room shortly and you guys are going to be stoked about that. Well, shortly I say, but I don't really know. It could be in the next two months. So thanks guys for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you want to support the build of the new reptile room and support me getting to new places to film awesome animal adventures for you guys, there's a Patreon link down in the description below. Anyway, that's it. I'm Bryce from Matches Reptiles. Remember to go out, learn, explore, inspire, and live it.